as most small business owners, you've got so many hats to wear. So you're involved in the production side of things. You're the director of the business. You're doing all the finance stuff. Um, any, you know, you're the HR manager. All those things fall on you, and it's 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 a lot to deal with. My name is Mel Carroll and I'm a designer, an illustrator and director of a spoke illustration agency. So I want to jump back to the beginning of your story. Um, a lot of this, these interviews are going to be targeted at people that are just starting out or in the middle of their journey. And we just love hearing where people have started and what was their inspirations and, you know, kind of chronologically going through your story of how you got to where you are now. Sure. So going back to the beginning of like, did you go to uni and like, how did you know that you wanted to like enter the creative industry? Um, I kind of was always into art and design as, as a, even as a kid. Um, it was the only thing I ever really wanted to do. Um, I had no real, real idea of what graphic design and illustration was. Um, kind of when I left school, I think careers advisors were notoriously about 10 years out of date. Um, so kind of blindly went towards studying art and design. So the first thing I did was I did the foundation course in the art and design college in Belfast. Um, Growing up, I loved painting. That was my 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 kind of passion. Um, I was almost a photorealistic artist. Um, I loved detail. I loved just getting swallowed up in that world. Um, and then when I went to university, it was kind of not what I expected. Um, I kind of expected it to be a very liberal, free space. Um, I was com I was coming out at the time um, and struggling with my sexuality, um, and I kind of thought our college would be that amazing, amazing space. But in the late nineties in Belfast, it really wasn't. It wasn't much different. Um, it was still experiencing homophobia. Um, the actual course itself, because it was very much open to what, open to different disciplines. It kind of threw me off balance because I love painting and drawing. Um, all of a sudden, we were making sculptures out of twigs and bits of plastic, and I was like, "This is not for me." Um, so I kind of fell down a path of not going into college. Really didn't like the course. Ended up failing the the last um, the last part of the course, and I had to repeat over the summer. Um, I quickly realized that I didn't want to stay in Belfast. Um, my sole aim was just to get out of to get out of Belfast and Northern Ireland and, and study elsewhere. So I applied for a graphic design course in Swansea. Um, I had to send over this giant, you know, the giant big folders you had. Oh, it was so heavy. heavy. So I don't know how, how much this cost to post. Um, so I posted it over. And then I got a call from the lecturer saying that we think you should do illustration. It seems more suited to what you want to do um, and more suited to the type of work that, you, that you've that you done. Um, and again, at that time, I didn't really know what illustration was. I loved the idea of a course where I could just draw all day. Um, so, so yeah, so I went in my merry way and studied illustration. Um, and yeah, I had a great time. Um, quickly came to the realization towards the end of the course that I wasn't going to get a full-time job in illustration. So that was a bit of a wake-up call for me. Um, uh, I think it was just, even, even now for, for, for illustrators starting out, um, there are no full-time jobs. It's really a freelance, it's really a freelance job. The only sort of jobs you can get are maybe background artists for um, animation and storyboard artists and things like that. 
Um, so, so yeah, I kind of did a little bit of graphic design through my course, and I quickly realized that was going to be the career that I should pursue, at least initially. Um, so yeah, so I finished my course and applied for just loads of graphic design jobs. It's very interesting you saying that you wanted to leave Belfast and um, you went to Swansea. Like, how did you feel? Because you said you were coming out at that time. How did yeah. you feel being in Swansea? And did you feel like you could be yourself more? Or And what was your idea of our college when you moved there? Was it different from when you were in Belfast? Yeah, it's still, it still wasn't a great art school as such. It It was almost more... It felt more of a, like a corporate university environment. Corporate's not the right word, but um, it certainly didn't feel like that art and design college that I imagined in my head. Um, in terms of coming out and my sexuality, I was very lucky that I had an old school friend who had moved to Swansea the year before, and so she found me a place in her house to live. Um, and she also told everyone that I was queer before I got there. <laughs> so I did, yeah, so I didn't have to come out to the the, the initial people that I met. Yeah. And it was just so great because, like, I mean, it's kind of a rare story, but um, I mean, you always have to come out. Um, you don't just come out once. If you meet new people or you're in different circumstances or you make new friends, you have to come out again. But to have that kind of foundation was was great and when you say come out like what does that mean to people who wouldn't necessarily understand what you're saying i think um i probably spent most of my childhood and early teenage years trying to suppress my sexuality so um i was tr i was kind of passing as a straight as a straight person mm -hmm. um and that was to shield myself from from ab from abuse or um, I, I, but I think, um, yes, yeah, so, so you really do have to make a conscious effort to, first of all, admit it to yourself and then to tell the people that you care about, um, your friends and your family eventually and that kind of stuff. But it's still a very hard thing for people to do. Absolutely. And I think it's very interesting that that process kind of it's like you have to really fight for who you are and really know who you are. Yeah. And to explain who you are probably consistently, maybe. Yeah. It's, it's quite strange. The more you do it, the easier it gets. Um, I think also um, when I when I was much younger, like I, I knew from a very early age that I was gay. I was about four or five, I think. Um, and I think I used art as an escapism. Um, it allowed me to kind of disappear into my own world and um, and also to create work that I sort of enjoyed the validation I got from that um, and instead of being the queer quid, queer kid I was um, oh he's really good at drawing so it kind of give me give me that sort of skill so in some ways I think my 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 creativity came from my queerness, mm -hmm. which I think is pretty cool. I love that. That's such a, that's a beautiful line. I love that. Yeah, I think it's only something you realize looking back, you know, at the time, you've no idea really, but. Yeah. So whenever you were in Swansea, did you stay there or, because you said that you got a job, you were interviewing for different graphic design jobs? I had, my whole university history is pretty messy. Um, I. I did the first two years of the illustration course and then I had a, a mental breakdown. Um, I lost my mum when I was a uh, late teenager when I was doing my A-levels and I don't think I properly dealt with it. So when I went to university, especially when I was in Swansea, you're kind of very isolated and you're on your own and you're, um, you, know, you have to look after yourself, which I didn't do very well. <laughs> um, like most people, I drank a lot and... Um, yeah, just through that um, exploring yourself and making new friends and stuff, you can kind of go down the wrong path. Um, so I actually had um, a manic episode, which resulted then that I had to go into hospital and then I had to be taken out of university. And then 
I returned then a year later. So I had to repeat my second year and my third year, um, which in hindsight, in hindsight was one of the best things that happened to me because when I was first in university, I didn't really appreciate it. I wasn't really interested in the learning aspect of it. It was the partying and the fun. Um, but when I went back to university, um, I felt really lucky to be able to do it. Um, financially, you know, I, it wasn't something that was easy for me to do. Um, but I really appreciated every minute of it. And I took the course so seriously and hung out with all the people that we're doing really well and we were kind of it kind of felt like we were in this little illustration club together and and i just really enjoyed illustrate our the illustration and also the university experience finally in those last two years so it kind of took me six really six years on and off to get my degree so that's a huge journey so yeah so it was a lot <laughs> and that's interesting that like, I'm very sorry to hear that you, or your mum would pass at such a young age. Because um, that's so hard to balance of like, that age anyway is horrible. Yeah. You're finding yourself, you're so awkward. You're also dealing with grief. You're also dealing with like your sexuality. You're also dealing with being in a new place. And then to have that year of just kind of healing, I guess, and kind of resetting your mindset around what you want. Whenever you first got your job, what was it and how did you feel then? So the first job was in Belfast. I came home and I met my partner, um, Jeff, in the year that I took out from after my um, breakdown in, in the second year of university. So that's when I met him. And we did a long distance relationship when I moved back to Wales for, for two years. Um, and then I went back to live with him when I graduated. Um, and we still live together. <laughs> um, so yeah, my first job was uh, a company called Level 7. They don't exist anymore. Um, but they had this contract with Invest NI whereby small businesses could get a free logo <laughs> or a free one page or three page website um so what i did all day was design logos um a lot of logos um i think i had to design four a day which is like pretty impressive when i think about it now. um and they were pretty terrible logos but um it actually really because i ended up working in brandon for years and um, it gave me a really good foundation but was, I, I think i i produced hundreds of logos um and really learned the skills that i needed in terms of illustrator and design photoshop so before i started that job i had no idea of how to use any of that software really and especially not illustrator which is the one i needed so i remember my lecture from uni posted me a disc so i could like try this out <laughs> and i kind of learn the kind of fundamentals so um so yeah it was pretty scary around that time i kind of felt that i got the job um like a lot of people kind of talk themselves into a job or big themselves up um, I definitely didn't have the skills that I needed, but I was pretty sure that I was going to get to learn them. Um, and I did, thankfully, <laughs> quickly. Um, that feels like it's, it's a very, like, kind of, I feel like a lot of creatives can relate to that, where, like, you're offered this opportunity and you're like, yeah, that's amazing. And then behind the scenes, you're just like, fuck. And then back then, I don't know, YouTube probably didn't exist or, you know, you didn't have the internet. Hence the CD and the post, <laughs> you know, it was like, um, and it wasn't actually Illustrator, it was Freehand. It was like a different version of, of Illustrator. Um, but yeah, I think, I think you have to kind of do that when you're starting out. I mean, we're lucky enough in, in the creative industries, um, and certainly in, in, in my business, it's the portfolio that matters. So the kind of, um, the detail around that isn't as important. It's really what is what the creativity is demonstrated from the work that you've created in the past. So, um, so yeah. Mm. So then how long were you in that job for? And then what does the next couple of years look like for you creatively? Yeah, so, so so within that two years um 
that business was kind of split into the people that were working on the Invest NI logo factory, as we used to call it. And then they had the design studio, which was the more senior people. Um, and they worked on what you'd expect a design company to work on. Um, brochures, websites, branding projects, some illustration jobs as well. Um, so because of my illustration background, then they used to borrow me to work on certain projects. Um, and I kind of got the feeling that people, it was the first time I kind of felt that you were, you were, people were giving you that validation and kind of assuring you that you, you were talented, you were creative and that you had potential. Um, and that was really reassuring. Um, coming from even the my university background into the professional sphere is like completely different. So, so I was able to kind of build up my portfolio a bit. So, um, so I had my illustration stuff, but then now I had some branding work, some professional illustration experience. Um, and then I applied for my second job then, um, which was more of a, a mid wit. I never really understand why designers get called mid wit and <laughs> It's a bit strange, but um, but yes, yeah, so I went for that sort of mid-level job, and um, I got the job thankfully. Um, and yeah, it was um, it was it was mostly a branding company, so not so much advertising, um, but but really a mix of all different types of clients and projects. So, um, it just gave me a lot more of an insight into the types the type of work that I wanted to do. And do you think it was beneficial? Because I think a lot of people now maybe don't value uni as much. Yeah. You know, like it seems to be more experience and portfolio. Do you feel like by going to university, it helped you or hindered you on your journey? I think certainly the certainly the foundation course hindered me. I could have actually. I was actually accepted to go straight on to the visual communications course, but I chose um, the foundation course because I wasn't really sure what I was doing, which seemed like a logical step, but I wish somebody had told me that you're geared towards illustration and design. You don't need to be making things out of twigs. Um, <laughs> and so, yeah, that was kind of a real stumbling block for me. Um, so it definitely didn't, it didn't prepare me properly for, for, for my career. Um, my degree course in illustration, again, didn't properly um, prepare me for my career. There were some business studies as part of the course, some prof professional practice, um, but not really enough realism there for what the industry was going to be like. Um, and I still think that's a big problem, um, even now with, with illustration courses and 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 um, degree courses in general, probably. Yeah, because they don't, they're very focused on like tick box and exercises of getting you through the course and you obviously learn the fundamentals, but in terms of like, they never seem to show you what it's like to be self-employed or, you know, what the industry yeah. actually feels like. So there's not that sense of like confidence that you're going into yeah. these spaces yeah. of like, yeah, I could probably do that. It's like, like you said, you're learning behind the scenes and you're like, probably teaching yourself so much more than maybe what you learned in. I mean, you have to kind of figure it all out yourself in the end. And how did you feel being back home? You've got your second job in that midweight <laughs> branding agency. Yeah. Like, how are you feeling about yourself at that time and what year do you and what aspirations do you have for your life? I was relieved that I had got a professional job. So um, that was great. Um, it was great to have a steady income, um, but I still, I had that feeling in the back of my head that I wanted to pursue illustration. And it wasn't so much even illustration, it was drawing and painting. That was something that I loved to do. And if I don't do that, I go through big um, periods of time where I don't do that. I have a niggling thing telling me that you need to get back to that. That's what makes you happy. That's what you enjoy. So, um, so when I first started in, in the second job, I had just finished and a, uh, a children's book with a local pro publisher. Um, and then I, uh, then I did my second um, children's book when I just started in that job also. Um, 
so I had a bit of an awareness of what it's like to be juggling a lot of different types of work. Um, children's book is a massive undertaking. Um, there are so many illustrations to do, and I was kind of working really late hours, and um, but I loved it, and I and and it was great to be doing what I really wanted to do. Um, and I did a few illustration projects through my design job, um, and a few outside, but it was mostly it was mostly design, design and graphic design and branding. So, and how long were you there for? So. I was there for I think ten years, so I spent a long time there, um, and I, I kind of worked my way up from, you know, from when I started as a junior designer to uh, creative director. So within that within that time frame, so even though I wasn't doing what I wanted creatively, I was learning lots of different types of skills. Um, I was on the board of directors as well, which was used to terrify me, to be honest. Uh, it was kind of, yeah, it was kind of scary because I, I really didn't think I knew why I was there. But um, <laughs> over the years, I think I, I was on the board for about three or four years. You kind of learn all these different types of skills that you would never really learn when you're when you're just be, just working on the design on design projects and things like that. So. It was, I think it was a really good foundation for me before I started a business as well. So you're in this job for 10 years, you're rising through the ranks, you're figuring out the foundations of how the industry works, but also, um, yeah, understanding how business works, but still you feel this niggling thing inside that you, there's something else to pursue. Like you've, yeah. if anything, you've kind of ticked the boxes of the professional train of like, you know, you're starting here and then you've gone up here but there's still something inside of you. Yeah, for sure. Um, illustration was always, always my, I find my love for it through university and through those friendships with other illustrators. Um, and it was always something that was a niggling doubt in my mind that, you know, maybe you're doing the wrong thing here. Um, I had this idea, I think, probably about four years before I started my business that I would love to put together uh, an online directory of local illustrators. Um, and hopefully this would be a platform where illustrators could find work from local design and advertising agencies. So I kind of always, I always had these little sparks of um, business ideas every so often, you know, you get like excited about something and, um, and that was one of those that kind of stuck in the back of my head kind of thing. So then when did you start your business and, and, and were you feeling confident about yourself at that point? Like I've always, always suffered from self-confidence issues. Um, so I definitely didn't feel that. I didn't even have the fantasy of starting a business as such. Um, I remember um, one of the other non-exec directors that was on, um, that was at the meetings that I used to attend to in my old job. Um, he said, one day you'll have your own business. And at, at the time I was thinking, that's some it seemed impossible. It seemed like there were too many things that had to happen for that to materialize. So it didn't seem possible. Um, so, um, yeah, when I, the business that I worked for, um, it was, it was around the time of the recession, um, about eight years ago and the business went under. So, um, I got a very small amount of redundancy that was kind of enough that I thought maybe that would be enough to get me started. Um, so, so yeah, I kind of spent a bit of time just thinking about exactly what I wanted to do. Um, and I think I spent, I can't remember exactly how long I spent. There was a period of um, knowing that this was going to happen eventually. So I, it was almost like this was a possible 
backup plan for when that day might or might not come. Um, so I used to, it was very regimented, I remember. I used to every week spend just like one or two hours coming up with this idea. Um, and at the start of it, I was still in the, of the frame of mind that I was never going to do it. But I thought, if I just gradually do a little bit, I'll see where that goes. And and by the end of that process, I had a really solid business plan that I felt was different than other creative businesses out there. Um, so I felt that the illustration angle was definitely something unique and not really explored locally. So that was always kind of give me a little bit of confidence in, in, in that there was an idea there or or something that could be explored that may might be successful potentially yeah so it was interesting then you being made redundant and then you had almost like this crossroads you either get another job or the situation is here for you to kind of pursue yeah. starting your own I business I remember interviewing for a job um, and then around that time when you know things were getting were getting difficult with the business and and I didn't get the job. I remember thinking, I really should have got that and like why did I not get that? And I don't know, sometimes it feels almost like fate is a play. Um I know that if I had done that job I would have been as unhappy as I was in the job that I was currently about to leave. Um so in hindsight, I was, I'm really relieved I didn't get that job because my life would have been completely different. That's so interesting. And so when you started your business, like from a financial standpoint, like how do you know how much you need to start with? And like, did you get loans or funding or what did that look like? Yeah, I remember um, I didn't, re because I didn't really know how to set up a business. Um, at the, at the time, I kind of thought, if worse came to the worst, I'm a freelance illustrator and all I need to do is generate enough money to pay myself something to cover my bills. So that was kind of one safety net. Um, uh, in terms of funding, I, I remember contacting Investing I, the Arts Council. I think I got, I think I might've got about a thousand pounds from Investing I. Um, and then I had a couple of grand from the redundancy so the, for, it felt like I had two months in the bag sort of thing um, and yeah so the, the, the most important thing or the biggest um, or the greatest thing that happened at that time was finding our premises on Queen Street um, which uh, yeah, it was almost like it made everything make sense, sort of thing, which was great. Um, and yeah, I, I, the the early days of the business were really spurred on by the connections that I made um, through this sort of illustration umbrella. So I contacted. Um, any of the illustrators that I knew locally um, that I could um, and tried, tried to make connections. I remember there was a Northern Ireland illustration meetup event um, that I thought, oh, I must go to that. And it was there I met um, David McMillan, who um, was an illustrator who'd studied in Bristol, um, wasn't long graduated. Um, and and moved back home for a year and needed somewhere, somewhere to work from. Um, so I was like, work here for free. Um, and, and he was really um, one of the people that really shaped how us folk um, came about as a business. Um, the other person that I met was Paul Riding, um, another local illustrator originally from Scotland. Um, he was kind of a part-time illustrator, part-time baker, I think at the time. Um, but he had worked, he lived in London and worked for the Association of Illustrators, which is um, a really important illustration body um, 
that really help people out with with professional practice and portfolio consultations, stuff like that. So he did portfolio consultations in London with illustrators. So that was like an amazing skill that I thought I have to get on board with this. So Paul started working part-time then for us folk um, and he helped me interview all the illustrators, create all the, um, the portfolios based on the meetings that we had with the illustrators and sign people up and put all the sort of elements in place to kind of build and shape the agency. So that's incredible. But that's down to you, like really emphasizing on your networking and your relations. You seem very relationship focused. Yeah, I mean, I when I when I worked in design, I worked for a design company that never ever worked with other companies. They were very sheltered. Um and I had this impression that all graphic design companies were very much in competition with each other um, and that they didn't really want to get to know other designers and illustrators and people would poach designers from one to the next. And um, so coming from an environment like that, that was very closed in and didn't really collaborate with other creatives, um, I didn't, I, I wanted the opposite of that. Um, and and yeah, I just started gradually meeting all these really cool, amazing people that I knew were out there. But it was really um, the relationships that I built with those people that helped build us folk. Um, people like Jackie Sheridan, um, again, worked with me at the start. And she was very, um, very vocal in terms of the types of projects we should aim to get, the types of illustrators we should attract, the type of image we should portray, um, and even the types of events and exhibitions that we would we would put on as as a means of promotion. So, um, and it was it was it was just like we all couldn't quite believe that we had met each other and that it all was fitting together so well um so I, I registered the business in january and came up with the name did all the branding myself um employed paul at that at that point um to help out part-time with the sort of setup at the agency and then in april of that year four months later then we launched the agency with um 20 local illustrators um so it's quite a lot of work. I can't I can't imagine how we did that, but um, it was a really exciting, um, fun time. And um, the studio space that we had, it was so cheap. It was ridiculously cheap, but it was perfect for holding events. And um, we also had a shared studio space that the illustrator could use. Um, so there was just a really nice vibe and an energy about the place. I never really, when I had the idea years and years ago about the an online directory, that was almost the very, that was the that was the seed of the idea. But um, when we find the space, um, and particularly when we hosted events and exhibitions, and we got such a big following. Um, because there was all these university illustration graduates, there were people, local illustrators that were actually really successful that work from home, had, you know, very rarely met another illustrator. And we quickly created a community. Um, and it was, there was just so much, was such a great appetite for it. And, and it was just, yeah, just a lot of fun. Yeah. And what is your business model, just for people that don't understand what us folk is? Yes, yeah, so um, the the business is kind of split in two. So um, the thing we're most known for and the bit that we would promote more is the illustration agency. So um, we basically sign up um, professional illustrators put their work on our website so we have all their all the portfolios from all the illustrators um, and then we promote them to design primarily design advertising and publishing companies 
Um, but really in the early days, it was to encourage local design and advertising agencies to use local illustrators um, and campaigns, et cetera. So, um, so that was the, that was the main goal. And um, the other side of our business is that it's like this graphic design thing won't let me go. <laughs> um, we still have a design studio and we would do graphic design, um, branding and animation as well. So, so this kind of split in two, but they feed into each other. So a lot of our, we kind of say a lot of our branding projects are illustration led and likewise with the animation and the design stuff that we do that the best work that we do still has that illustrative influence um so yeah those are the the types of things that we try to work on the most <laughs> yeah and at the time was there anything like anything else that existed like us folk or were you guys kind of pioneering the illustration community in belfast yes yeah, so Illustration, it, there aren't many illustration agencies in the world. Like, there's really not that many. There's not that many in the UK. Um, there was none in Ireland at the time that we started. Um, I think there's one in Dublin at the moment that um, did not officially an illustration agency. Um, but um, yeah, we were certainly the, the the first the first Irish one and. And yeah, it was, it's very rare for an illustration agency to be in a small city. They're usually in London, New York, Paris. Um, so yeah, so but I but I didn't see that as was too big an obstacle. I kind of felt that it's the digital age. It doesn't really matter where you're based. Most of the illustrators are, um, you know, based at home themselves anyway. So so yeah. And you're kind of, yeah, it's just interesting that you had this idea like four or five years prior to your business. And I love that you were just so persistent on pursuing your illustration, like really fighting for it and then somehow making it into a business where you're also connecting with other people who are struggling with the same thing. I think um, it's difficult when you have a passion or something that you love to do and something that you want to do as a career and can't quite get there or um and a lot like a lot of people you do a job that you don't love as much just to keep going and sometimes that job sucks all the energy from you um and there was definitely periods of maybe like two three years where i didn't do any illustration work and it just made me really unhappy like even though i didn't notice it that much at the time it was grinding me down i think um so yeah i i if i if i meet someone now even an illustrator who maybe is pursuing a different path i i'll always try and encourage them keep at it and keep creating work even if it's just for yourself like i still do self-promotional work for myself if i don't have any illustration jobs on because i'm kind of like this is what i want to do and I think nowadays with social media, it's great because you can get that sort of instant gratification in a way from your peers. So, um, so there's a lot more of a sharing feel to it, um, and and a de and a desire to make that content. Um, you know, back in the day, you're just drawing for yourself in a sketchbook, but nowadays you're posting it for your friends and. You, and, and for even your your colleagues or or your clients as well, and you don't really know where that idea or or piece of artwork can lead or the life that it has. Um, so yeah, anyone that a sort of elapsed artist or illustrator, I'll always encourage to keep at it, no matter, and even if it's just in a small way, just keep creating. So another thing that I want to touch on is like diversity. It's kind of like a, a trendy word at the minute, but do you feel like by being gay, has that ever held you back from any opportunities or do you feel like you've ever been discriminated upon within your industry? Um, I didn't, I haven't felt any professional um, discrimination, thankfully. Um, 
I have a bit like we, what we were chatting about before. I remember coming out to my boss because it was quickly aware that he he was he assumed that I was straight. And and what you were asking before about what's it like to come out? It's if someone keeps talking to you about um, oh have you got a girlfriend or why have you not got a girlfriend or probing questions about your personal life that you get tired of um, not necessarily I don't know what to call it you're not lying about your life you're just not really re you're not ready to divulge that to that person at that time either because you don't trust them or you don't feel that any of their business um, so I kind of made a conscious effort to tell my boss and he was a Christian so I kind of felt you know it could be risky he could treat me differently um, but he didn't at all he actually once he got used to it um, he just treated me the same as everyone else thankfully um, and that's been my experience for the most part um, us folk in general is um, I think we're a pretty forward-thinking bunch of people and always have been. Um, we're kind of split. There's as many female illustrators as there are male illustrators. There's a, a whole bunch of queers. <laughs> um, we love um, creating exhibitions and events around the sort of um, uh, LGBTQI plus um, umbrella so that is kind of our vibe so every every pride um, we'll try and put on an exhibition and do something different each year um, myself um, and Jamie Baird have worked with Outburst Queer Arts um, Festival and created um, a gay history project a few years back and so we've kind of used the Us Folk platform to kind of speak our truths in a sense and um and anyone that has something that they they want to protest about or talk about or make artwork about we're always really encouraging of that um, and yeah and that's just the joy of working with different creatives and um, especially my experience with illustrators they're generally really lovely nice people and um i'm and yeah, they're really passionate about what's going on in the world, and I think that's really great. Yeah, I think illustration's such a powerful medium, really powerful medium. Underestimated, probably. Yeah. And in terms of like, what was your experience when the pandemic pandemic hit, and what was business like then? And um, the business then was so we're internally a very small business of two, three people. But we have um, now we have around thirty illustrators, so they're all freelance, and um, so it was really myself working as a designer, illustrator, and running the business, and um, Jamie as a um, designer working four days a week, and Fiona as illustration agency manager working three days a week. So that was our setup during the pandemic, and. Um, so we had just moved into our new studio um, in in December, and then in March we had to leave it. So we didn't even have pictures on the walls, and, and we were paying rent for somewhere that we couldn't use, which was quite depressing. Um, and we love working together. You know, we listen to music all day, and um, you know, we go for pints after work. So all of that was gone. Um, and I know my setup at home was a little better. I had a a small studio space that I could work from with my partner. Um, so it meant that um, I could kind of separate work um, and life a bit. Uh, but for Jamie and Fiona, um, they couldn't really do that. So um, Jamie had to move home with his and work from his parents' house. Fiona was living in a shared, um, a shared house, um, so she had to work in the kitchen with all her flatmates walking in and out. Um, and yeah, I think like everyone at the start of, the start of that first lockdown, there was a level of almost uneasy. It was a, 
excitement's the wrong word, but it was kind of this like thrill of um, the unknown and um, you felt like you were living in a movie almost. Um, but then after those first couple of months subsided, it got pretty pretty samey um, and pretty stifling and I think we all got lots of bad habits <laughs> and um, so yeah it was very difficult for us in terms of productivity we used to chat every morning and it, we used to speak for maybe chat for like two hours on Zoom so our productivity dropped massively because we were kind of missing that interaction um, and we would probably talk or have meetings for the sake of meetings. Um, whereas when you're in this, your studio, you can ask a quick question um, and just get on with the job sort of thing. So um, and I think like, you know, I wasn't, I was certainly not putting any pressure on people to work um, your usual business hours. It was like, just do what you can. We're just trying to get through this as best we can. Um, the biggest knock on effect that we had was because we produce a lot of artwork um, and design work for events and um, you know anything sort of events based all of those jobs disappeared overnight so you know we work with um, Belfast Book Festival, Culture Night, all those kinds of things um, so those all disappeared so it was a big chunk of work that we weren't getting um, the one upside was that we started getting more requests for animation um, so and more digital content so that was that was some one change that was positive that kind of helped us through it um, and we kind of figured that out along the way <laughs> yeah and did you feel a lot of pressure because obviously you're the person who started the business like did you feel the pressure like the weight of it or were you in the mindset of just like we'll just kind of navigate and see how this I goes? kind of felt it was this collective thing where if I feel it doesn't really matter because I've got a really good excuse um I'm like we're all going down in this shit kind of thing um so I wasn't completely afraid I think it was like everyone else in the world other things became more important um so and my father was ill at the time as well so I was very much concerned about that and putting a lot of time into that um so work just for the first time really took a back seat I think um and you were more kind of focusing on your the life that was in front of you yeah I think so and and not 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 even so much it wasn't so much in a positive way of focusing on my life. Um, it was more trying to distract myself from what was going on in the world. Um, um, and work is a great distraction. And and thankfully, you know, we were able to work throughout the pandemic. Um, you know, we didn't have to lay off any staff or do anything horrendous like that. So, um, so we were really lucky that way. You know, I felt like the good ship us folk helped us sail through that a little bit um but um but yeah it did it did make me question the importance of work um and work running a business is really not always fun <laughs> there's a lot of stressful stressful situations um things that you have to deal with and and they can really get on top of you um and so I was trying to maybe not worry about them as much anymore or try not to. I don't think I did a great job at that, but... <laughs> well, you're here. <laughs> um, and I'm sure it's not easy as well when you're not... Like, you've got employees, like, you have to... Yeah. You know. um, yeah, and you do feel like a responsibility. Um, and there... Um, I, it's... You know, I don't really have a lot of employees um, at the moment. There's there's myself and there's Jamie, um, who's pretty much full-time animated now as opposed to designing. Um, and then we have another, one of our illustrators does some part-time promotion and admin, that type of stuff. So, um, 
so yeah, uh, I, I I do feel a, a sense of responsibility, but at the same time, um, I'm encouraged by the people around me and what they do that they're going to be okay, and so I can't shoulder all of that myself. <laughs> I love that. So, like, what advice would you give to? someone that's starting out in illustration they've just either not decided to go to uni or they've graduated uni what advice would you give to them them pursuing that path yeah um i think there's no rule book as such um one of our most prolific and awesome illustrators stephen morris graham um didn't study illustration he studied something completely different um, and then just decided to do this himself, you know, so he just picked it up and, um, like he's worked with some amazing clients all over the world, um, off, all off his own back. Um, so I don't think these days you need to follow a conventional route. Um, back in the day it was, it was felt that you had to go to university. It was the next step after your A levels or your exams or your your college. Um, that was the next step, and you had to achieve that in order be to become a professional. And and nowadays, when I see the amount of money that people are spending to do these courses and the debt that they're getting into, that they're hardly ever going to be able to get out of there has to be another way. Um, they're really not even learning necessarily what they need to know. Um, I think there's the confines of university hold, holds it back. Um, I've no doubt that there are amazing illustration courses out there and amazing teachers and people that can prepare you. But life is what prepares you really for creating your career you know when I said earlier I really had to figure everything out by myself that was that that's the way it is for everyone so yeah I don't want to challenge people to kind of just skip the university thing but wouldn't that be great if people just stopped going to university <laughs> um, it was I spent I really felt like I spent so much time and money not really achieving very very much or not achieving anything i couldn't have achieved elsewhere um i love the whole idea of um apprenticeships and from back in the day where you learned trades on the job and i would love to go back to that i think you know there is a level of that in terms of internships and things like that um and that's all great but yeah let's just skip the university thing and save yourself 20 grand <laughs> but I really feel that um, if you know what you want to do and you're really confident that you want to do at a young age you can just proceed just start trying to pursue that um, and there's no reason why you can't almost start your business so much younger these days with very little um, you don't need any revenue or anything you can just if you're literally you're your own resource or you your skills and your creativity and your talent are um the thing that will carry you through or um help you kind of build your career so you've got all the tools already in yourself um and yeah i just think the way information and is so readily available now there's no reason why people can't find that find out and figure that out um but i do think it's pretty scandalous and um, the amount of money students have to pay and especially people from low-income families um i was lucky back in the day to have a, a grant like it wasn't very much but it was a lot you know it was enough to keep me going um alongside a loan a student loan um but the loans that people need to get now and the fees that they have to pay are just so such a, a crazy difference in the last 20 years i think it's really unfair to to um expect young people to shoulder that burden 
hooked on this false hope that you're going to end up with a with a career and it's not just illustration or di or design like um there are there are a bunch of courses that directly lead you towards a career and, and as soon as you get out you do your internship and you work your way up and and that's great graphic design is one of those jobs animation is like that as well illustration definitely isn't um but there are so many other courses that have no no gateway to careers and i'm just like why i have one question around like failure in terms of because obviously you've been in business for a long time yeah. and i would imagine you've probably made mistakes do you have any like and i don't even like using the word failure because i think you can kind of put a lot of fear into making mistakes where actually when you make mistakes that's whenever you probably make the most growth yeah. so i'm trying to figure out what word to use but would you what would you say you like your biggest failure has been within business? biggest failure that's a very heavy question. <laughs> yeah, I think, I think, um, and uh, there haven't been any catastrophic failures, thankfully, um, that I can remember. Um, but my, something that I have failed in in the past is trying to do too many things myself. Um, because it is quite scary, the financial side of your business, um, and the way our business works, we don't have projects booked in for months and months in advance. So I can't say this year is going to be a great year. I can say this, this next two months are going to be busy. Um, so I've always, that's always something that you have to live with is that uncertainty. So it's not like having a full-time job. Um, you can be issued reassured by the fact that the more years I put behind me it means that well it's worked then hopefully um it'll continue to work that way so so yeah my biggest feeling is is really not taking on help when I should have um and and I really can't balance everything myself I have literally as, as most small business owners, you've got so many hats to wear. So you're involved in the production side of things. You're um, you're the director of the business. You're doing all the finance stuff. Um, any you know, you're the HR manager. All those things fall on you, um, and it's 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 a lot to deal with. Um, so I have the fantasy of how many people I would like to work for us folk. Um, but I just need to find how to get there. So it's just about, it's about, yeah, recognizing that you need help and, and, and having that faith that things will work out. My last question is what piece of advice would you give to your younger self? Something that I regret not doing when I was younger is just following my passion rather than being led by I need to get it um, an adult job so in hindsight in that uh, foundation course I should have just done fine art portrait painting do you know what I, that's what I really wanted to do was just to paint and I got sidetracked by life and carried along and I was just too worried about not being able to pay bills so yeah just follow follow your passion for drawing and painting and never stop that <laughs>